Okay, can you see my screen? Oh uh, yeah, I see it. Perfect. All right, let's go over some. What do you want to do? Questions or vocabulary? Um, maybe a little vocabulary first, and then. Cool. Let's definitely. do it. Okay, what's that? Uh, isn't the market that data approach like the um comparison between properties? Perfect. Good. Grantee is the it's the one who receives a grant. Good. So one who receives well a deed. You're receiving a deed, yeah, right? Deed, yeah. Good. Isn't voidable like illegal? So you have void, valid, and voidable. Do you know what the difference is between those three? I I don't. Okay, good. We can I know move valid over. Like, is, is, is good, so that, I know valid. Okay. So if you sign on to buy a blue house and the house is blue, what is that? Valid. Good. If you sign on to buy a blue house and the house is green, what's that? Wouldn't it be void? Nope. So that'd be voidable. Do you know why? Because it's not, it's not what it says on the contract. Right. So why is it voidable and not void? It's voidable because you signed the contract, and it's not, it's not what you signed. Right. But so, but it's voidable because you may actually want that greenhouse, right? Oh, so it gives you the option. You would have the option to keep it or resign from the contract, right? Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, like you have the option. You know, you see it all the time. So think about shoes, right? So you yeah. go to the shoe store, the the Adidas store. Do you like shoes? Yeah. I love shoes. I'm big on the Adidas new Pharrell Williams shoes. Have you seen those? Oh, yeah. the I think they're like just do it or something like that. They said something on the middle. Yeah, the tennis like who? Them. They're yeah. awesome. Okay. So I went to the store, right? I wanted to get my Adidas Pharrell Williams new edition, limited edition shoes, right? Yeah. I wanted the white ones with the white bottom that looked like the old school Stan Smith. I, yeah. I, I purchased it, right? And they get brought it out, the shoes I wanted. Valid contract, right? Yeah. But then they brought out the shoes that had the yellow bottom. I didn't want the yellow bottom. Void or voidable. You didn't want it, so it would be void. It would be voidable. Do you know why? Because you had the option? Because what if I'm like, you know what? I wanted the white, but the yellow is awesome. I'm really into the yellow. Those are great. So, so, but you say you didn't want them. But I decided I did. Do I have the option to change my mind, though? Do I have the option oh, yeah, to go through with it? Yeah. That's okay. what makes it voidable. That's what I want you to understand. Okay. And it would be void if I wanted those shoes, but those shoes were stolen. They weren't even theirs to sell. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? So I could be like, yeah. I want the yellow shoes, but then I found out, like, the store owner didn't even own them. He stole them from somebody else. So basically, like, fraud. Yeah, so that could be void. But what I'm trying to get across is valid, everything's good, voidable, you know, you have the option. option to go through. And void is when you don't have the option to go through. And my example okay. of this was like the shoes were stolen. So, yeah, that would be void. Yeah. Okay, I get it now. So, valid is good. Right, Voidable so you think like a option. house, you get a house, you want the blue house, and you show up, and the house is red, or it's got like a green door. It's not what you wanted, but you may like it. You may like the difference, or you just may not care. Because yeah. you plan on painting the house anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. There's, What's some, this? there's a few questions on that, too. Whether something was voidable. And yeah, that's void. a big one. You definitely want to know. So what's this? I never saw that before. So you'll hear the words remodeling and rehabbing. 
okay? Remodeling is changing its design, more or less. Rehabbing is when something's old and making it better. Don't worry okay. too much about that one. But this one you do want to worry about. This one you should know. Isn't a blanket mortgage, um, isn't it like interest? Okay, so what does the word mortgage mean to you? Um, mortgage on an estate. Okay, so you're taking out a loan, right? Yeah, a loan on an estate. Okay, good. So what does the word blanket mean to you? Just think like, don't overanalyze it. What, what do you think of when you think of like blanket? Warm. Warm, okay. It's like covering, right? Yeah. It's covering more than one thing. Covering more than one loan? More than one property. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, but so... When you, when you think of this, you just think of more than one? Yes. Okay. Think of like a blanket laying over more than one thing. Okay. Okay? Yeah, so I blanket can... mortgage is a loan that you could take out against like two properties. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Abstract will be, um, isn't like an analysis on a property? So the word I want you to remember for this is the word summary. Can you do that for me? Summary? summary? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, see that right here, summary? Mm -hmm. So it's a condensed history of the title. In short, it's a summary. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So when you hear of abstract the title, it's a summary of the title. Okay. What's this? I don't know that one either. No, sorry. Okay, have you heard of the baseline and meridian? No. Okay. So what I need you to do when we get off the call is study the baseline and meridian. And what these are is how you identify where a property is. Okay? okay. There are two lines that cross. So and you study like townships and sections and all that. Yeah. You ever heard of those? Yeah. Okay, so this is related to that. So what's a township or a section? Have you heard of that? A township, isn't it like 36 square square miles? Good, per square excellent. Mile? Yep, perfect. And then the township is 43, 560? No, that's an acre. Oh, that's an acre, my bad, my bad. My okay, bad. okay. But you were right. So the township is the 36 square miles, Okay. Yeah. How do you know where that township is? It should be this, right? Well, so if you look, but you start with this baseline and meridian. The meridian line goes east-west. Excuse me, north-south. The baseline goes east-west. And okay. you should find it in relation to where that is. That gets into more detail. I have another video on it where I can send you later. But you want to look that up. Okay. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Because that's a whole other topic we could get into a different time. Okay. All right. So what about the meets and bounds? That's related to that too. So okay. it's all on that same topic. Okay, got you. All right. Yeah. Test day. Test day. Wouldn't that have to be like? Something that's like kind of valid, because I know there's test date and in test date. Good. So wouldn't it be like, um, maybe like a valid property? So this is related to wills. Also, oh, a property, uh, someone that has a will to a title. Good. Well, not to tell us, sorry. This could be for anything. It just means you have a will. Period. A will, and then in test date would be no will. Perfect. Exactly. Okay. All right. So what I really need you to do, you know, um, this week as your test is coming up, I really need you to study this vocabulary. Just nail it down, and you'll you'll okay. do a lot better. Okay. Okay. So what's okay. this one? Um, I know it's accepting something. Why? Because it says vendi. So. So so you see the ee right? Yeah. 
So it's good. So anytime you see the EE, you know they're receiving the something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you hear the word vendor all the time in life before you're studying for your real estate exam, correct? Yeah. Okay. So what's a vendor? The vendor isn't when you're giving property, right? Well, it's anything. Remember my shoe example? Yeah, like vendor, like you're, you're vending maybe some shoes, um, the car. They're selling like, something. They're selling yeah, something. Like right? anybody. So a lot of these terms, as you're learning them, they're not as hard as you think. Like you use these all the time in your life. And sometimes you may be thinking real estate and you're making yourself more confused than you need to be. Just overthinking, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Like words like vendor, you see all the time. A vendor is somebody who sells something. Right. So a vendee is somebody who's buying something, right? Yeah. Antitrust laws. I never heard of this either. Okay. So what you're going to want to learn, and some of the stuff I want you to write down as we're talking, so you know to review it when we get off the call. Okay. Is the Sherman Antitrust Act. Sherman Antitrust Act? Yes, correct. Okay, got it. All right, so what the Sherman Antitrust Act does is it talks about antitrust laws. And basically what that means is that there has to be free market competition. Do you know what I mean by free market competition? Meaning being able to, to compare properties without a problem, right? Well, meaning that you have... I mean, properties must be like... Um, just the most near than other properties, right? Well, it, no, this just means that everybody has a chance, the right to compete for business. Okay. So when you pass your real estate exam, you have just as much of a chance to compete for business as I do. I can't stop you or hinder you from being able to get do business. Yeah. Because then it wouldn't be fair for the consumers, the people who want to buy things. Right. For example... If me and my friends got together and made it impossible for you to do business, well, then we could raise the prices because you don't exist anymore. Right. And so the Sherman Antitrust Law Act and the antitrust laws prevent that very thing. So when you study this, you'll hear words like price fixing, okay, group boycotting. These are all things that are against the law because of the Sherman Antitrust Act, and these are antitrust laws. Right. Okay. Okay, does, I, I get it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Make like price sense. fixing would be like, we're all charging 6%, and anybody who charges less than that, screw them. We're going to make your life miserable. Like, you can't do that because that's not fair to people buying homes. Right. Okay? Got you. All right. And here's the example I was just talking about. I'm sorry, I never heard of this one either. Okay, codicil is just an addition to the will. An example of that would be like... Um, just a modification to it. Okay. All right? Yeah. Okay, what about this one? Um, isn't it something you do with the title? What are you doing with it? It's like backing away, like say, say, um, a note, like a quick, so say it was a question, I believe. So it was, um, it's like, say if somebody's has a lease on a house and they sometimes vacate, but they vacate one time and never come back, wouldn't that be a notice of a quick claim deed? No. So a quick claim deed is just a way to immediately transfer title. Oh, okay. Okay? So what's a deed? A deed is a given title. A deed's a way to transfer a title. Okay? Okay. 
And you'll hear things like grant deed, quick claim deed, and other things of that nature. Okay. These are right. all these are all just ways to transfer title. Okay. Quick claim so, deed is is the way to transfer title, and those you hear the term no express or implied warranties. And what that basically means is what you see is what you get. Okay. All right. I mean, if there's problems with the property, too bad. Right. That's why you'd only use this with, like, friends or family. You wouldn't use this in a normal sale of a house. Okay. Got you. Okay. So if I just want to give you my house, just give it to you. Like, we trust each other. We're family. And I just want to put it in your name. I would use a quick link. Quick link. Got you. Exclusive right to sell listing is um, it's that that broker has that broker or no 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 that broker has like a certain amount of time to sell that listing. Good. So there's a limited time. And if not, the the um seller can um can resign from the contract. Good. So. What does the word exclusive mean? Let's start with that. Exclusive is like not not rare, but like I wouldn't I wouldn't really know how to express. Well, here let me put it in more real life terms, okay? If you're dating, right, and you're right. in an open relationship, what does that mean? That everybody knows about it. Well, that you could date many people, right? Yeah. If you're in an exclusive relationship, what does that mean? That it's just me and that, me and my partner. Good. You and one other person. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so like, like an open, open listing that would be any broker has the right to sell the property, right? Exactly. Exactly. Perfect. And exclusive is just one broker specifically with it. A Good. termination date, right? Exactly. Good. So the reason you have a termination date with the exclusive listings is because there's only one person. So if they can't do a job, you need the ability to hire somebody else, correct? Right. Where with an open listing, if they don't do a good job, you can hire somebody else without you know, getting their permission or anything. It doesn't matter. Right. So th there was a question on a test, and the the broker or the agent of the broker found a purchasing ready buyer, whatever, and but it was after the termination of the contact I mean, of the contract. So, would they be allowed to get commission if they found the buyer after the termination of the date? It depends if in the question you heard the word either protection period clause or safety clause. Did you see either of those words? No. Then no. So they wouldn't be required to any commission. Right. And the reason I bring that up, because that protection period clause, which is also known as a safety clause, what that does is it gives you a time period after the listing expires to close deals with buyers you've been working with during the term of the listing. It's not a time to find a new buyer. Oh, it's a time to get close, them to buy. Right. Close deals with people you've been working with. So the answer to that was probably no. Especially if they were saying they found a new buyer after the listing expired. Yeah, yeah, so I know I got that one wrong for sure. Right. Okay. Now, the other thing about the exclusive right to sell listing you want to know is that the broker gets paid no matter what. Right. All right. All right. So no matter so regardless if they if they didn't find a buyer after the termination date they get they get paid for for doing like open houses and stuff like that. Say it again. So they would get paid for other expenses if they didn't find a open and ready willing buyer. No, they would get paid if somebody bought the house. Even if they're not the one who found that buyer. Okay. Whereas exclusive agency listing, if the owner founds the buyer, then they get nothing. Okay. Um, accretion is the setting, the suddenly washing away of land or That's cool. land coming in by natural causes? Good. So accretion is the gradual addition of water. 
What you were talking about is avulsion, is the sudden washing away. Okay. And that one is by natural causes too, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, I got confused because they asked, it was two questions on that. I thought, so accretion is the, is the washing away or that's ablution? No, accretion is the addition. Okay, addition, addition. Okay, got you. Implied agency within that law of contract. Well, what does the word implied mean? Specifically to you, like expressed to you. Okay, so would you ever hear the term like um, walks like a duck, acts like a duck, must be a duck? Yeah. All right, so it means your conduct says that you're an agent. So an agency was not expressly set, but must be deducted, deduced, excuse me, from other circumstances and other facts, meaning from their actions. So if I'm acting as your agent and you're okay with it and we're following through with it and we're looking at properties together and all that kind of stuff, I'm your agent. it's implied that I'm your agent, exactly. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, so an agent... Yeah, got it. Life is in the life estate in a state from period to period. No, that's a period. One, one, of, one of one of of one of hold someone's life. So life estate just means I own the property based upon somebody else's life. It could be for the person living there. It could be for somebody else, but it's based upon somebody else's life. And. That, that has nothing to do with wills or anything, right? No. Okay. Different subject. Okay? And I do a video on the life estate where I have, like, the example of the king and whatnot. Okay. You may gotcha. want to check okay. that out. I will. But basically, it's owning a property based upon somebody else's life. So when that person dies, you don't own the property anymore. Okay. This is the one I have a lot of trouble on. Um, isn't wouldn't this be like time a, a contract a contract of what you can and cannot do? No, so this just means something you can't go after somebody after a certain amount of time. For example, um, let's say I take your shoes, right? Uh -huh. And you're angry with me about it. Can you come after me about it 50 years later? No. No. What would the court say? Like, why didn't you talk to him before this? Right. Because there's a statute of limitations. That's what that means. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, like, saying you want to sue somebody for a house that's, like, 20 years later. Right. When for most things, there's a seven-year limit with real estate. And then, like, keeping contracts and stuff, that would be three years, right? There's different... Little contracts? Here, let me phrase it like this. There's different statutes of limitations for different circumstances. Okay. Does that make sense? There's different time frames. Okay, got you. Fixture. Something added to the land? How do you know it's added to the land? If it's movable. Did you hear the term Maria? Yeah. Method, adaptability, relationship, intention, and agreement? Yeah. You got to know that when it comes to a fixture. So, is it something that's fixed to the land? Yes. And the way you know it's fixed to the land is the method is attached, it's adaptability, the relationship to the parties, the intention and the agreement. Right. All right. That's why I remember that term, Maria. Got it. Anyway, I remember you saying that too. Let me just write it down again. All right. Got it. Appreciation. Um. 
um, appreciation is the income of the value. I mean, of the property. Good. Puffing. Isn't puffing illegal? Not exactly. Puffing's just an exaggeration. Sorry. Let me write that down. Can I give an example of that? Sure. If I walk into your house and I say, this is the most incredible door I've ever seen in my life. It's so awesome. I love it so much. It's wow. That's an incredible door. Yeah, and I'll be puffing. Right, because I'm not necessarily lying. For all you know, I may think it's the most incredible door, but more than likely, I'm exaggerating to make a sale. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, I got it. Like, it's just in a gross exaggeration. I say about this door, and you're like, it's just a door. What are you talking about? I go, no, no, but it's awesome. Woo, that door. Yeah. So that's why it's not necessarily illegal, because I'm not stating facts. Yeah. Don't worry about that one. Prepayment penalty. I've seen this one on the test too. Um, is it? Isn't a prepayment penalty is when you pay maybe the, I think it's the first month and the second month rent and the lease. No, this has to do with getting a loan. Yeah, I'm, I'm not so sure about it. Yeah, so it's when you pay a loan early. How does a lender make money when they when they um, give you a loan? By getting approved by the bank. And then Good, so, so the lender gets a, gives you a loan, and how do they make money? So if the bank lends you money, how do they make money? When, when you pay the interest. Good, the interest, okay. So if you pay off that loan early, can the bank make money? No. So then they'll penalize you with that prepayment penalty. Oh, okay. Because basically you took away their chance to make money. Because they lent you money with the agreement that they'd be making money on interest, correct? Right. So there you go. Can, is, is, uh, isn't a a lien on it's a lien on the property, right? Good. It has to do with um money. Good. And it has to do with something specific to like a worker on the property. Yeah. Something that has to be fixed, right? Yeah. Okay, got it. Township is thirty thirty six square mile. Good, because it's six by six. Six by six, yeah, got that. Good. Freehold estate. Um, this is the one that holds the most highest and best use of an estate. So you have two types of estates: freehold and less than freehold. Okay. Okay. Freeholds are when you own the property. Less than freeholds are leases. Okay, got it. Freehold estate. So freehold estate is owned and less than freehold is leased. Good. So when you have your freehold estates, you have things called like a fee simple absolute, life estate, and fee simple defeasible, also known as a fee simple determinable. In a, in the in. The fee they in the, the, in the simple, that one is that's the, the maximum. Thing. That's the maximum yeah. degree. Yeah. Then the okay. less than free old estate you have the estate for years, the periodic tenancy, estate at will, and estate at sufferance. Okay, less than free old estate. And that all has to do with basically leasing, right? The less than freehold estates. The free old gotcha. estates have to do with ownership. Gotcha. You. Gotcha. Okay. Um, the right 
Is this the right to move from one person's land to another? It runs with the land? Good, excellent. So it means it runs with the land. What does easement mean? Is it, isn't it the right to move across to someone's land? Good, it's the right to cross a property. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Oh, I never heard of this one. Okay. Wait, I, I guess it would, wouldn't it be the master plan when it doesn't have to do with a developer? So the master plan is just the layout of the city. Yeah. Like, you notice how New York City and Los Angeles look very different? Yeah. Very because different. they had a different master plan. Okay, Los Angeles is criticized for its master plan. Because it looks very chaotic, and there's always traffic in the streets, and everything's going which way and the other, right? Whereas New York is well known for having a great master plan, so it's very orderly. The streets are very orderly. It has that famous subway system and the trains, you know, and, and they fit a lot into a small area. Right. That's all has to do with the master plan. Does that make sense? Yeah, got it. The America with Disabilities Act. What's that? The the right to to have fair fair. When you go to school, right? Is there a ramps? Yeah. Why? Because the people who can't walk for themselves have to get up some way. So. And that's be be and that's because of the America with Disabilities Act. What you just stated exists because the American with Disabilities Act. Right. And this is part of fair housing. Okay. Yeah, that's and, what I was trying to get to. Yeah, so basically it says things like schools and other public buildings have to be accessible to, as you said, people who have trouble walking, right, who maybe need assistance like wheelchairs or other types of assistance. Right. Okay, so they can enjoy the school and everything else too, just like everybody else. Got it. All right, and this was in 1990 this came up. There was an amendment to fair housing. Okay. Got it. Franchise, when I think of franchise, I think of a business. Good, so it's when you buy a business under a marketing plan. Like you'll hear something like Keller Williams is a franchise, okay? Yeah. That's a real estate office. And you notice they all look the same, but they're under different ownership. Because people right. own them, but they all follow the same marketing plan. They all have the the you know the same colors, red, and they all follow that same downline theory. They all have the same business model. Right. Um, is the change in nearby zoning? No, this just means you're losing value for reasons oh, oh, outside the property lines. Yeah, it's something you can't control, right? Yeah, give me an example. So, um, it would be like there's a plane flying by every every morning. Good. So, and planes in flight. Yeah, you can't do anything because it's outside of your property. Good. So changing nearby zoning would be like police power, right? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Good. Do you know the other government powers? The eminent domain. That's another one. So you got police power, eminent domain. There's and two others. The local city councilor? No. So you remember the word peat. Police power, eminent domain, taxation, and escheat. Oh, it's, it's, isn't that with some... Isn't that... Uh, what about condemnation, too? Is That's that part of that eminent domain. That's under eminent domain. Okay. Okay. So, so what I'm going to do for you as well, which I think will be helpful, you know, um, we'll record this so you can listen to it again. And I'll put it up so you can listen to it again. Okay. Because you'll hear all these things that we're going over that, you know, maybe didn't write down or, or that stuff like we talked about with the, the peat and all this other stuff. Okay. All right. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you.
Ripian is River Stream. Good, excellent. Literal. Yeah, I don't know this one. So, Riparian River, Littoral Lake. Lakes and oceans? Yeah. Okay. It's basically body waters that are not moving in a specific direction. Okay. So, when you say okay. Riparian River, it's not always rivers. It has to do with bodies of waters that are moving. Yeah, like the sea, like ocean, stuff like that. Yeah, and why is that an important distinction? Because it depends how it affects nearby properties. So right. if you live by a stream and you put something in your water, it affects everybody downstream. Right. Got it. Okay, so latches. You ever heard of this? Never heard of that either. Okay, just remember delay, the word delay. Latches. See that word? Delay. Got it. Yeah. Acknowledgement um, is when you're acknowledging a, a person, a ready and willing buyer. It's just a declaration, a declaration, giving authorization or something. And a deed, you don't need it to be acknowledged, right? Right. Like you just make yourself aware of something. Okay. All right. So I got to get ready for the next appointment, but you got me on Skype. You know, and you could chat with me and we could talk more as well, go over more terms at a different time if you want. Okay. Because okay. we went over a bunch today. We went over a bunch of terms. Okay. And I want you to notice what we did today. When I went over everything, we didn't go into huge depth. We tried to cite little words like latches delay. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like it really specific with everything. If you could do that, you'll get past. So I should just go through the terms? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. And then go through the terms, do some practice exams. Go through the terms, do some practice exams. And you'll okay, notice exactly. as you know the terms better, you'll get do better on the practice exams. Don't just do one or the other. You have time before your test. Right. So really gotcha. make a habit of going back and forth between those two things. Okay, I got Because if, if you're just doing the practice exams, it, it's just going to kill your ego if you just keep getting stuff wrong and don't not really getting anything out of it. Right. And does that make sense? Yeah. So if you go through the terms, practice exam, term, and, and this, this one we just did, you could do from your phone very easily. Yeah. So yeah, that's how I've been doing it. Yeah. So I'm just setting up the phone. Yeah, so just keep doing that, and you'll be okay. I'm here for you if you need anything. You know, we're friends on Skype. You just write me whenever you need to. Okay, thank you very much. All right? Okay, talk to you soon. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.